This is Professor Palton. This is Technical Mathematics, Chapter 12, Section 2 on Quadrilaterals. So quadrilaterals are all the four-sided polygons. Um, the overarching categories being parallelograms and trapezoids. Parallelograms have two sets of opposite parallel sides. Trapezoids only have uh, one, hence why the diagram is split into two. So two sets of parallel sides and one. That's the only thing you need to be a trapezoid. And then under those you have subcategories. So parallelograms are, are turned into either rectangles or rhombi. Okay. So they're either all 90 degrees or all four sides of the same. Okay. If you have all four sides of the same, right, which is a rhombus, and you have all four 90s, then you are a special case called a square. Okay. And trapezoids only have one special case where the uh, opposite sides uh, are parallel, but in the special case, the isosceles, you have congruent um, base angles and sides. So these are your base sides and base angles are congruent. So these are congruent that way. Okay. So logically, are these true or false? Are all parallelograms quadrilaterals. Well, in order to be a quadrilateral, you just need to have four sides and parallel parallelograms have those. So the answer is yes. The next one are all quadrilaterals parallelograms. Well, no, because if you go down the diagram, okay, you only need to have four sides to be a quadrilateral. So you can either a parallelogram or a trapezoid, or neither. So that's not true there. So B is no. Okay, next one. All rectangles are parallelograms. Well, let's see. If you're a rectangle, okay, your opposite sides are parallel, okay? So if your opposite sides are parallel, then you are a parallelogram. So that one is a yes. Notice that went up the diagram, not down. All parallelograms are rectangles. Wait a minute, that's the same question, but reversed, isn't it? So all parallelograms are rectangles. Well, if I'm a parallelogram, does that mean I'm necessarily a rectangle? I might be, or I might not be. I might be a rhombus, or I might just be a parallelogram all itself. So that's going down the diagram. That is not true. So the diagram is called a hierarchy diagram with the lines, which has to do with royalty back in the uh, hundreds of years ago. Um, so if you, what's, what's necessarily true, basically, is if you go up the diagram, it's going to be true, and down the diagram is going to be false. All right, pause the video. Try the student problems for yourself. All right, are all squares parallelograms? Okay, if I look at the diagram, squares below parallelogram, square has four parallel sides, so therefore all squares are parallelograms. So that first one is a yes. All rhombuses are rectangles. Hmm. Well, rhombus and rectangle are opposite of each other. Rhombuses don't have 90 degree angles and rectangles don't have all sides the same. So that cannot be true, okay? So whether it's rhombuses being rectangles or rectangles being rhombuses, they're both no, okay? They're not going, it's going lateral across the diagram. That's not how diagrams work as far as hierarchy diagrams. All trapezoids are rhombuses. Okay, while well, trapezoids only have one set of parallel sides where these ones on this side all have two, so that can't be true. Plus, we're going left to right on the diagram, so that also indicates a false um, answer. So, no. So, you can answer these yes or no, true or false, I guess. Either one would be sufficient, so no. Okay, let's go to page two and do some basic measure um, examples for the quadrilaterals. Okay, so the first one is a parallelogram, which means your opposite sides are parallel. So we have A, B, C, and D. 
So side AB is right here, which is going to be the same as this side since it's a parallelogram. So that's 14 inches. And AC is this side, which is opposite the 8 inches. So therefore, since it's a parallelogram on all sides are parallel, we also have opposite sides congruence. That's also 8 inches. We have angle A, which is going to be 82 degrees because these two are opposite. They need to be the same in, in parallelograms. And the last one, angle C, this needs to be the same as this. So that's 98 degrees because, again, in a parallelogram, the opposite angles are congruent. Okay, the next one is a or is an isosceles trapezoid. So we have A, B, and C here. So side AC is right here. So by definition of isosceles trapezoid, these two sides are the same. So that's three feet. If it was not isosceles, that would not be true. Okay, angle B is uh, right here, which needs to be the same as this one, which is 115 degrees, because by definition, the base angles must be the same. And angle C is right here, which needs to be the same as this one, which is 65 degrees, because those are also base angles. Because you have two bases in an isosceles trapezoid. You have the bottom base and the top base. Okay. Okay. <coughs> we'll scroll down a little bit to the next two problems here. So then we have rectangle and rhombus. So in a rectangle, you are a parallelogram by definition, and you also have... 490 degree angles. That's the added piece. So A, B, and C. So side EF is right here. So that's going to be 25 millimeters because it has the same properties as a parallelogram because rectangles are parallelograms. Side FH, that's going to be 9 millimeters for the same reason. And angle E, which is right here, is going to be 90 degrees, which is specific to rectangles, not parallelograms. Okay. And rhombus, A, B, and C. So a rhombus is a specific case of parallelogram where all four sides are the same. So side CD is going to be seven meters, since they're all going to be seven meters, essentially. And angle A is going to be 42, because a rhombus is a parallelogram, so opposite angles are the same. And angle B will be 138, so we get the opposite angles again. Okay. Pause the video, try these student problems for yourself. Okay, so the first one we started off with is a rhombus. We have A, B, and C here. Side CB needs to be 3.7 inches, since a rhombus is a parallelogram with all sides congruent. Angle B needs to be 64, and angle C needs to be 116, because opposite angles must be congruent in rhombuses and parallelograms. Okay, in a specific parallelogram, we need angle M. Well, let's write our A, B, and C first. Well, the angle M is going to be 80.45 degrees, because it's opposite the S. Okay, next we have S. TP, which is going to be this angle right here. All right. Well, angle S and angle T must add up to 180. So if I do 180 minus the 80.45, I'll be left with 99.55 degrees. Okay. So that means that this angle right here is 99.55 degrees. And the angle opposite it is 99.55 degrees. So I need to, to subtract out 99.55 degrees and subtract the 72.08. That give me the remaining piece would be 27.47 degrees. Okay, so 27.47 degrees. All right, so the last one is SPM. SPM is going to be that 99.5 degrees. Okay, try the next two. We have rectangle and isosceles trapezoid. So rectangle is a specific case of parallelogram. So side EF must be, let's see, A, B, and C must be 11 centimeters because parallelograms and rectangles opposite sides congruent. EFH, EFH is this right here. 
well, we know the whole angle must be 90, and they're split in half. It's rectangles and squares. So that makes mean it's 45 degrees. I'm sorry, EFH? Yeah, 45 degrees. And then GFH. GFH is the other piece, which is also going to be 45 degrees. Let's see, EFH and GFH. Yep, so it's basically split the 90 in half. And that, that doesn't apply to parallelograms, it just applies to the rectangles and squares since they have 90 and they're going to be. Uh, oh no, that's not true. This isn't a square, it's a rectangle, I'm sorry. So let's erase that and fix it. I was thinking square there for a minute. So we know this is 90, and this is 90, correct? So this whole piece right here is a triangle. So the whole triangle is 180 degrees. So we take out 180 and minus 90, leaves us with 90, right? Because we subtracted out one angle. Then we subtract out the 38, and we get 52 degrees. So that means this piece right here is 52 degrees, okay? Which means this other one right here needs to be 38 degrees. So that means this is not 45 and not 45. So EFH um, was going to be the 38 degrees, and the GFH would be the 52 degrees. I'm going to leave that in the video, because again, the way you do squares versus rectangles is different. The squares would be the 45. Rectangles is not. So again, what's important here is the triangle must equal 180, and the, each corner must add up to 90. OK, last one, isosceles trapezoid A. B and C. Okay, um, angle one, we're not going to get that directly. I have to do a few pieces of work here. So we're going to know that this is going to be 73 degrees because these two together must equal to 180 degrees. Okay, and of course the opposite, um, uh, this is also going to be um, 73 degrees here. Okay. This angle one is not 107 because the, the angle one is only the little piece. So the 107 is not going to be useful for us. But if we take 180 and subtract 90, I get 90 because I'm taking out the 90 degrees here. Then I take out the 73 and I'm left with 17 degrees. So I took out the 73. So that leaves me my angle one, which is the 17 degrees because I'm using the triangle, the fact of the triangle is 180 degrees. So angle one is 17 degrees. Angle A we already found, which is 73. And angle B is also 73. Because isosceles trapezoids have congruent bases. So this whole thing would be 107 if I actually needed it. All right, and that is the end of part one.